it's me, TC, and guess what? I stumbled into the historic chief, the historic chief theater downtown Seamount Springs, and I found Nada. The Nadas! I found them. They were here doing a little sound check because they're playing in Steamboat tonight. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Yes, and you, so you're back. Yes. Now, I got a little inside scoop, but first I want to, I got three real important questions and that's going to guide where we go. Okay, ready? Ski or snowboard? Snowboard. Snowboard. Beautiful. Um, coffee, tea, or juice? Coffee. Coffee. Big one right here. <clears throat> Hawkeyes or cyclones? Mm. Cyclones. Yeah, cyclones. Excellent, because I know there's some Hawkeyes fans in the area, but that's unfortunate. I wonder why you're starting this in interview by making us make these decisive <laughs> proclamations. <laughs> De divisive like, proclamations. Divisive. We've saying. just alienated all tea drinkers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and yes, and Hawkeyes, <laughs> which do we mind if the Hawkeyes don't come around? Yes. Yeah, we, we do. We actually made a point very early in our career of, of having no official collegiate affiliation. We went to Iowa State, so we're Cyclones, but we played okay. in Iowa, at, in Iowa City. Yeah. And, and Cedar Falls, and you and I, Falls, yeah. and I, sometimes at Decorah, Luther College. Is there like a corn fest or some type of festival that goes on up there, you guys, big music jam? Um, there's all kinds of corn Always. fests. Always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you play, there's no, we bring all of Iowa together when you guys are playing. Can we say that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Even definitely. wherever, whatever, whatever other state we're in. Best musicians to come out of Iowa? The Greg Nata? Brown is my favorite. Yeah? Do you know Greg Brown? No, I know the Nadas, though. They're okay. really good. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. Nice. Um, Slipknot is from Iowa. Oh, I've heard of Big them. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Big time. They represent Iowa. <laughs> yeah. They, they make more in t-shirt sales every year than I'll ever make in my whole life. Is there ever a Slipknot <laughs> Nada collabo maybe in the works? Uh... I had, uh, my son was in preschool with their drummer, <laughs> their drummer's son, so that was sort of a collaboration. We played, the one time, like way back in the day, we played. Laser fest. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, but also we did like a, a radio thing where the band set up and played live. State and it was of Independence. Something like that. Okay. So we went right before Slipknot, and that's when Slipknot, it was maybe their first gig, because they just took all the metal bands in Des Moines, and then they were like, let's play together, and it was awesome. Wow. All right. I so hope we didn't go after them. They went after us, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. No? <laughs> right. Them after you would be okay. The other way around, be not different. so much. It would we be different. I mean, there's, there are similarities in what we do. Yeah. <laughs> in Entertain. That, in that, yeah. <laughs> in that we're on stages with microphones, but we don't, we rarely bleed on stage. Rarely? And they regularly bleed on stage. Do you prefer Oh, we did have the same chiropractor for a while. No. Yeah. Seriously? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're on tour... Mm -hmm. You got to be fit. You got to have the, the posture. Oh yeah, I was thinking about Do that. you prefer sitting or standing when you're playing? I don't. I can't actually sing if I'm sitting down because I'm no. not in good enough shape. <laughs> I have Yourself. to be standing. Stand. Stand for sure. I mean, I guess I would prefer to sit, but it just right. seems kind of lazy. Also, if I was sitting while I was playing, I would fall asleep. Fall asleep. Yeah. yeah. Oh right. Okay. How about altitude when you're here? Does that affect you guys at all when you're playing? Yeah, but bit? I have a secret weapon. What's the secret weapon? Aspirin. Pre. Show. Ex Excedrin, yeah. Excedrin, right before, a couple hours. Like half hour before. Half hour before. You're set. Gets you through a good two-hour set. Much. And then a lot of breathing. A lot of breathing. Yeah. And then I was asking your partner here, a pre-show libations, it helps, relaxes, prepares? Absolutely, yeah. Always. I, my voice is conditioned to be able to only sing with beer. <laughs> It's true. It, ha it really has nothing to do with the buzz. It's more just the, like it makes my throat work. Relaxes. Mm -hmm. You're in that mind. Same thing? Or is your Whiskey, but yeah, same thing. <laughs> Whiskey works for me. All right. We all have the ring of power. I noticed that. Mm -hmm. I've got GPS tracking, audio, oh, this Bluetooth. One. Yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong hand. Are there little, how many little musicians are running around the houses? I have two boys, two boys, and they they play music when I make them. When you make them, yeah. I have four. I got three uh, girls and a boy, and my eldest is a musician. Yes. And then the middle girl is being forced to take piano lessons, oh. and they all love to sing. Okay. So his his oldest girl is on our new record. That's true. What is her name? Let's give her a shout out. So Emma Emma, Emma. Butterworth. She sang back up on this, but. She's been writing her own songs, and she came to me not too long ago and says, Dad, I wrote a couple songs. 
I'm ready to play them for you. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But then in the back of my mind, I was like, these are going to be terrible. Because <laughs> she's 16. Okay. And uh, they were amazing. I'm really? like, well, I don't like you. Oh. <laughs> so the apple's not falling far from the tree. She's got it. Real, the writing process. Is there a collabo? Is it, hey, you, if you're off doing your thing, you guys come together and you're like, listen to something I've kind of thought about, played, written down. How's your process work when you guys we, do that? We both kind of gather seeds constantly okay. and, and notes and ideas, and then we kind of make a point of getting together to write. Yeah. And uh, that was like the second half of our career. We kind of realized that there was an advantage to that. All right. And so these days we, we try to write our songs together. Right. There's a, there's a couple here or there where somebody will have a lot more done, and then we just ask the other person to put their two cents in and gotcha. help them out. But How long you guys have been together now? 25 years. 25 years. How long you been married? 10 this time. 10 me as well, you? Uh, one and a half this one time. One and a half this time, okay, <laughs> this time. Did the marriage change the writing relationship and the traveling and the touring and the practicing in any way at all? Nope. Never. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, they're, because they knew what they were getting into, both Okay, of them, that's... And they're both super supportive. They are. So, yeah. Same thing. Same thing. My, my, my wife um, actually spent, she says she did 600 shows with us, like selling merch and as a tour oh, manager. Yeah. And so she's done all the travel with us. She's been everywhere and all right. seen everything. Okay, now, who wants to tell the story about a bus catching on fire? Over rabbit ears, possibly? Sounds like you do. No, I've been, <laughs> I've, I was proxy some info, you know, a little yeah. research. Give us that story. Who, who can tell us we'll, that? We can both tell it. Right. Yeah, our old bass player uh, was driving at the time, and we had a 1985, 1985 Eagle. Eagle Model 10 tour bus. <laughs> that used like, to belong to Meatloaf. was Meatloaf's bus. Come on. Yeah. So it's like that style of bus is what you'd see Willie Nelson still riding around in. Oh, right. But if you got going, if you started too fast, <laughs> it didn't have the brakes to slow down. It would... It would fry the brakes. And we know this going in. Yeah, I mean, I mean we know this. The bus has been coast to coast many, many, many times. Many times. It's just that sometimes, you know, things get out of control. All right. So <laughs> what you do is you get to the top, yeah. you drop it into low, yeah. and you just cruise. Let her go. But he didn't do that. Oh, no. And so he's pumping the brakes, and the brake pedal keeps going further and further to the floor. And it was the last runaway truck ramp. We had to decide if we are going to take it. Yeah or try to make it. And it was, it, I was super scared. There's it, it was one not seat belt in that bus. <laughs> one. The driver. The driver. And it's, it doesn't have a shoulder strap. It's just a lap belt. Oh, yeah. So no airbags. No. no. So my memory of it is, uh, is I was in my bunk asleep. Oh, and, uh, and all of a sudden, I was like, <coughs> and I noticed it was all kind of hazy and smoky. And I get up, and I'm like, hey, John, how's it going? <laughs> and he's just going, just white knuckle, just, just trying to hold on for it and I'm like huh we're going pretty fast down this hill in this curve aren't we and he's like yeah and I'm like there's the truck ramp we're gonna do it and he's like I think I can make it oh so we went all the way down okay. and we got right to uh the lake as you come into town yeah yeah but and that's the reason we stopped there is because that's where we stopped we had no brakes left yeah. zero yeah so we <laughs> coast to a, a stop there and we pile out of the bus and it's just smoking out of the back wheels and we get a little tiny fire extinguisher <laughs> and we try to put it out. And as soon as we hit it with the fire extinguisher, it went <laughs> and just these flames oh. go everywhere. So we had to make another split second decision, which is let it burn <laughs> or call the fire department. And what we should have done was let it burn. Oh, but, but we, we called the, the fire department. department. <laughs> And yeah. I believe they were like, like a block over yeah. there. So they could <laughs> down the road, yeah. We, we saw the doors come up, and they came out, and they called us idiots, and they <laughs> left. And <laughs> they we, were awesome. They, they were, were really, really, really <laughs> cool. We took a bunch of pictures. You and did. And then somebody here fixed us up enough to get back home. Yeah, so we drove it right back over the next day. Oh, man.